10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello, and welcome to Rocket Fuel's Whack Whack Recap. No, that's just a silly name. This um, is a new video series that I'm starting. It's a weekly recap video series. Um, I'm still coming up with the name. I think it might be called Takeoff, but I'm not sure. But basically in this video, every Friday, I will give you an update of the key stories that happened in the previous seven days. Um, and then you can go back and watch the videos and get more information about what's happened. But today is Friday 17th. So this is the third Friday in February. And um, yeah, let's let's go over the best stuff that's happened this week. So we got this update from Dave who said, Happy Friday afternoon from the future in Australia. Today we've got a couple of exciting announcements for everyone. We are always happy and willing to be ambassadors for the benefits of decentralization and how that can provide a deep benefit for all those involved. So it is with great pleasure that we want to relay that Coinbase Ventures has invested in the protocol. We recently announced their intentions to join the ODAO. So this is a, just another step in them willing to back decentralization, uh, a, decentralized, a decentralized staking protocol such as Rocket Pool. And then Coinbase Ventures says, we're excited to announce that Coinbase Ventures is deepening its partnership with Rocket Pool via a direct investment in RPL, in addition to its proposed entry to the ODAO. Coinbase Ventures also plans to use their RPL and ETH to spin up their own Rocket Pool mini pools. So this is fantastic news. Um, it's extremely um, price positive for the for the community. Like there was a lot of good price action after this after this news came out. Um, a lot of hype and a lot of attention was paid to Rocket Pool because of this, and there was a whole lot of speculation going on about what this will mean for um, staking with Rocket Pool going forward. So you know, Coinbase themselves have said that they will be using uh, Rocket Pool to start their mini pools. Um, we don't know how many mini, mini pools they could start off with. Um, the RPL they bought. Um, there's a wallet that shows that might be theirs that shows they bought about 45,000 RPL if that's their wallet. Um, so that's definitely something to keep an eye on. A lot of people seem to think that this might be um, a step towards um, Coinbase using uh, Rocket Pool as their staking service provider um, with, the, with the idea that they will. Um, present a TradFi image to the world and on the back end they'll be using Rocket Pool to get outsized ETH returns and RPL rewards on top of their staking, uh, which will mean that they can offer more competitive rates to their customers. So this is definitely one of the biggest stories of the week that has happened. It's definitely um, really caught the attention of everyone in the community and on crypto Twitter. So um, dig into Friday's episode for more information about this. Okay, another great thing that happened this week was um, this info from Mark Zeller. He says, just queued Rocket Pool's RETH onboarding into Aave Timelock. will be available tomorrow at 3 p.m. Um, Central, um, Central European time. So that was posted on the 12th. Um, and then we got a tweet from the team saying, following a successful round of governance voting, Aave has uh, constructed a price feed and onboarded our ETH to their version 3 Ethereum market. We're looking forward to working with Aave initiative on deeper integrations in the future. Um, and then other integrations were already happening on the back of this right away. We got this from DeFi Saver saying, uh, our ETH is now live on Aave version 3. Congratulations to Rocket Pool and all Rocketeers on a large step towards greater adoption of our ETH. You can start using our ETH in Aave today with our Aave th version 3 dashboard and leverage staking one transaction recipes. So um, the integrations are already starting to happen and that is really wonderful to see. Um, and then we've got a tiny bit of a teaser from Mark at the end. He says, now next step is to activate E-Mode for both CBETH and RETH. Um, if you want that to happen, feel free to deposit an Aave so we can have market data and the ACI has strong case for governance. So um, Aave, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a lending protocol where you deposit your crypto assets and can borrow um, ETH um, I think maybe even stables in return, um, with, depending on, on how the product is integrated. And then um, you you basically um, have liquidation prices and all that kind of stuff. Um, the interesting thing about, uh, well, it's just huge. It's the biggest, I think it's the biggest lending platform in, in on Ethereum um, and maybe all of crypto. So it's it's really amazing that our ETH has gotten this integration. Um, so this happened on February 13th. So you can go back and watch that episode for more information on, on the process. Um, However, one thing that I want to add here is um, Mark here mentioning um, activating E-Mode. E-Mode e will um, allow um, RETH 
uh, deposits to borrow ETH at a way higher um, collateral rate because the two are so closely pegged um, and I think that will um, lead to some interesting um, interesting ETH minting strategies that will emerge because of that but this is a really big and huge news and it's really exciting and I'm really happy that um, Aave has all gone through the process so congratulations to Rocket Pool team and everyone who worked on that integration and the Aave side too. Okay, so um, last week we had um, some proposals that were running in the um, snapshot vote for Rocket Pool. There were three proposals that were running. The first one was um, RPIP16, which was to change protocol settings for Atlas. This was to increase the size of the deposit pool and um, like some things related to that. And that vote was passed um, by 99.68%, um, which was like a huge huge pass that will increase the deposit pool size to 18,000 um, ETH um, which is 13,000 higher than now um, and I think the team will use that expansion of the deposit pool size to um, ARB the deposit pool and then give the money from the ARB to the R ETH holders as, as kind of a reward so I think that will be a really nice boost to the R ETH um, staking rewards which was which is really nice to see. Um, the next one was uh, the self-limiting um, Rocket Pool uh, RPIP. So this was a vote to set principles that Rocket Pool will grow and abide by in its growth. Um, it says that you know we will start limiting ourselves depending on certain market situations when we are at around um, 14, uh, 16 percent I think of market share and then we will set a hard cap at 22 percent of market share so this again was an extremely popular um, vote for the community um, it, there were 8,500 votes for this which is more than the other two votes that were happening also and this passed by 99.55 percent with one um, node operator voting against this with their 38 um, votes and finally, we had um, updating of the Grants Management Committee. Um, so here we had um, some changes to the frequency with which uh, the Grants Management Committee meets from every two months to every three months, once a quarter instead, and also to expand the size of the Grants Management Committee to nine members instead of seven members. Um, again, this was a very popular vote and we had 98.32% of people voting in favour of this happening and uh, 126 votes abstained, which is 1.68%. So all of these votes have passed um, and you know, you'll know you start seeing more things about them very soon. In fact, uh, the Grants Committee has already um, started working on their stuff, so I'll talk about that next, well, soon. Um, another interesting thing that happened this week is um, this article from... Um, uh, Coin Telegraph shows that Rocket Pool's Ethereum staking service reaches one billion dollars um, in TVL. So that covers all the staked ETH that we have, and it also covers all the RPL that is um, staked on those nodes. So that's where Rocket Pool's um, total mark, uh, total value locked comes from. Um, and then you know this article showed some data, and it talked about the price appreciation of R RPL and their TVL in recent weeks. Um, and how that is going really well so that's fantastic and also another milestone we hit this week was um 400,000 eth is now staked on um, rpl so that's for 200,000 from node operators and 200,000 r eth that's been minted so um that's really fantastic that you know we're we're in this situation um so we're hitting some really good milestones right now and there's a lot of momentum with um rocket pool which is which is fantastic Okay, let's move on from that. Um, here we had um, the grief exploit that you might have seen from last week um, that, uh, you know, an exploiter um, sent um, dust amounts of RPL to um, stake, uh, stakers, uh, node operators to lock their RPL for 28 days. Um, this has now been fixed on the on the ODAO um, and the vote has passed um, to fix that. Um, nine votes went through and there um yeah and that was that was fixed so that feature now has been removed from staking um, on the official website and um, i think the team are revamping that um, service uh, for atlas so they'll get a more permanent fix i think the the route they're going is um, whitelisting addresses that can stake that you can 
that can stake on your load on your behalf so that is definitely like really great to see that the team worked so quickly on getting that exploit fixed and um now i think it's just another couple of weeks before the funds that are locked can become available to those 440 odd people who who got locked so that was definitely very good okay another thing that happened is as i was mentioning the gmc um the vote passed for uh, revamping the GMC. So we got a whole bunch of people applying for the new GMC positions. We had um, uh, Fornax was nominated and um, Encryptix, Dundachaka, Shifrin, um, RPL Maxi nominated themselves and um, Underwood nominated themselves. Um, Object Object nominated Kevster and Epinef. Um, and then um, Valdov closed the vote three days ago, the closed nominations three days ago, and said the nominees are Fornax, Encryptix, Dundachaka, Shifrin, RPL Maxi.eth, Underwood, Kefsa.eth, and Epinef, and um, Anis, Anisoptera. I'm sorry if I pronounced that badly. Um, my pronunciation is terrible. But it says, um, so we're looking to fill three slots with. Um, two from the expansion and one from cal stepping down um it says nominees in the next three days please provide info um request an rpip 10 in this thread so we started getting the alignment statements we got one from shifrin um we got one from uh, rpl maxi uh, and epinef and dunder chaka um so yeah please give these um give these statements a read um get to know the the candidates and um they'll be coming to a vote very soon so um this is really great i haven't actually read the <laughs> candidate statements myself yet so i'll definitely be reading that okay um next we had an update of marceau's um thesis of uh, his projections of rpl price so he uh, changed his numbers a little bit to make them um slightly less bullish but still very bullish overall um and his base case assumption is that at the peak of the next bull run, RPL will hit 0.072 on the ETH ratio, and that will be a multiple of 2.6 from where we are now in terms of the ratio. Um, he didn't give any US dollar amounts because we only talk about um, RPL uh, price in ETH terms. So um, it's, it's nice to see. And then he has a whole thread here explaining what he's positive about. So he says he's positive about uh, percentage staked, um and um but he just did that um down five percent and then the stuff that he's neutral about other stuff he's positive about and then the thing that he's negative about is rpl collateralization he said i've shifted this one down fairly significantly due to a variety of factors that i won't get into here but he adjusted that number down 35 percent so that is the one that's um imp impacting his uh, price projection the most but um definitely give give his numbers a read um and check out his spreadsheet that he links as well so you can play around with the numbers yourself but um i know a whole bunch of people really um um, six months ago they were really fascinated by Marceau's um, spreadsheet and like his his projections we even talked about it in an episode of rocket fuel uh, where Marceau was the guest and we kind of discussed his uh, bull thesis so um, definitely um, give that a look if you are curious about those kind of projections okay next we had um, this from Cal who says the GMC challenge period is closed with no community challenges registered so for those of you who don't know the grants round finished on um the application finished on January 15th, the awards were announced on January 31st, and we gave people two weeks uh, to um, challenge their results if they felt inclined to do that. Um, Carl said here that no challenges were made, so he says the first of the retroactive payments, approximately 35% of each, will go out in the next day or two. He says if you receive a grant or proposal a bounty expect your gmc liaison to reach out to you in the next 48 to 72 hours to discuss payment schedule acceptance criteria etc so that information is um that was made public on the 15th and then um yesterday we had the first batch of retroactive grants were paid out to community members so here there's um 12 grants that were paid out um and then um like carl said you'll be getting um your uh, GMC liaison will get in touch with you in the foreseeable future to figure out what's going to happen on the next step. So that is really exciting and really um, great that that's happening really nicely. Okay, and then finally, um, as we talked about the 
the stake on behalf of um, exploit. So one of the things that came up in the community was this thread on the forum saying, should Invis remain on the GMC? Personal thoughts and the poll. So for those of you who don't know, Invis was the member who discovered the exploit and then talked about it in trading. Um, one of the community members, were, the exploit was used against one of the community members. And then in the days after that, um, the exploit was weaponized and used against 400 plus node operators. Um, Invis got banned for one year from the Discord um, because of that. Um, and then the discussion was, you know, how should Invis stay on the GMC because he was an elected member of the GMC. So Slugrug made this post talking about how um, he feels Invis should be removed from the GMC. And then there was um, a Valdorf made a vote and it was a very, very active thread where a whole lot of people um, took part and um, gave their opinions. People like Valdorf, Whisker, uh, Object, um, veterinary uh, and then we also had people like granddaddy cool and looking for owls and um, myself shiffrin uh rocknet a whole bunch of people gave their opinions and um kind of talked out in wooden ship.eth as well so um there was a really good discussion going on because of the way the the vote is looking right now um it looks like this will go to a snapshot vote so um if you have a look yeah definitely keep the, the keep side is about 50 percent in total remove side is about 40 percent in total with around 10 percent of people saying uh, neutral um but um yeah these um this is something that the community has been talking about quite a lot and it's a topic that the community has like strong opinions on so it's definitely um it was worth covering here because of that reason so um this was a very brief quick uh, weekly update of the main things that have happened in rocket pool um of course, you know, I have five daily episodes, uh, five days a week um, that go into a lot more details with all of these things. And I also talked about all of these things as they're developing the story. So you get a lot more nuance, a lot more discussion about those topics as well. So if you're curious about any of these stories, you can go back this week and find find it in the videos and get a lot more information. But um, this episode will be coming out every Friday uh, where I will um, talk to you all about um the like the the biggest stories that i feel happened in the in the previous week so um i'm going to try to add it going into atlas and depending on how it works i'll either carry on going forward or maybe i will stop doing it at that point but um yeah um it's really exciting so thank you all for watching and i'll see you on this recap next week bye